ένα, δύο, ένα, δύο, ένα, δύο, τρία, πήγα στην κυρία. That's a poem for kids. Oh. Ένα, δύο, τρία, πήγα στην κυρία. spirit of a place and that's been my guiding light as I've led tours to Ireland, France, Italy, England, Southeast Asia. The question always as a tour guide, tour leader, lecturer is essentially the same as when I travel alone or when I travel as a filmmaker. I want to find what is throbbing and thrilling below the surface of a place. My favorite uh, thing to show there here is par parts of the real traditional history, no matter if this history goes back only 100 years, because most of it starts thousands of years ago and we keep on uh, keeping alive the old traditions. It's, uh, more than 800 degrees uh, Celsius, which is uh, 1700 Fahrenheit, and the plant is still alive. Watch your hand. You which means how much resistant to the heat is the body of the kiln, okay? So that's my favorite thing to do. Of course, it is nicely combined with the study of the Minoan civilization. It is based a lot to nature, to the countryside, to the secrecy of the goddess of the earth, as we used to talk, you know, earth goddess, Gaia, uh, it's a time period that uh, Greek gods did not exist, so we had to worship to a specific goddess thousands of years ago. But we're still doing the same nowadays, because on the island of Crete, when something wrong happens, you will not hear, Oh God, oh Christ, save me. You will hear Panagia, which means Our Lady. You, you know, Virgin Mary. Well, the thing that immediately comes to mind was we took a hike up to the mountain top and it, the hike lasted for about three, four hours. And at first I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do it, but I was challenged by it. And I'm glad I brought my hiking boots with me. And I had a really supportive group that went with me and I followed uh, George's all the way up to the top. And it was just a fabulous, uh, fabulous scene, a fabulous view. And uh, I think that's one of the things that I, is so memorable. I will have that with me for the rest of my life. But then in turn, I believe makes my tours with Sacred Earth Journeys and with some other people I've, I've led tours for, it's something I've called the morning long conversation. It's a tradition that I had with the great mythologist Joseph Campbell, that within a minute or so of handshakes and small talk, how are you, how is the family, you get right to it. You get to what the ancients used to call the irrecusables. Those are the questions that must be Ask. See if you can detect the influence that a letter like this would have had on a 12-year-old kid. I am doing my duty, fighting the Turks. You fight, too. Stand your ground, and don't let those Catholics put ideas into your head. <laughs> They're dogs, just like the Turks. <laughs> You're from Crete. Don't forget that. Your mind isn't your own. It belongs to Crete. Sharpen it as much as you can so that one day you can use it to help liberate Crete. Since you can't help with arms, why not with your mind? It too is a musket. Do you understand what I'm asking of you? Say yes. That's all for today. Tomorrow and always. Do not disgrace me. People are yearning for the long conversation. They're learning to talk about things that matter to them 
and they're longing to be heard. There's an old folk saying here on Crete, where we are sitting today, he who is a good listener becomes a good storyteller if he's paying attention. <laughs> Through Phil, you know, we don't see an ancient Minoan palace as this assortment of crumbling stones, but rather the stage upon which fateful events occurred over the course of thousands of years that deeply informed the cultural identity of the modern day Cretan people. And, you know, an old building which might easily be dismissed as being lifeless is animated into this living organism that is eager to sing her ancient stories to us. And we see a place not as static, but it's being constantly in motion. There's this constant conversation and exchange that's happening between us and a place. And I think this is the kind of magic that Phil is able to create. <laughs> phenomenal. Words can't describe it, which is sad for a writer, but sometimes that just happens around Phil and Georgios. It was a magical trip connecting the past and the present, walking on the ancient ruins, traversing the land with people that love it so deeply, and you feel their spirit as they enter into their land as they walk and go communicate almost with the stones, then back to the people, connecting the people that are alive today with their ancestors. It all comes together, the thread like Ariadne, and comes around into a full circle of fulsome, lovely being alive, bringing the Zorba into the realm of real, from the book to the real. It means you have a belief that there is such a thing as the real thing in Athens, in Heraklion, that there is a real Dublin below the tourist superficiality. So I love, even on the first day here in our tour of Crete, I quoted the great Nobel Prize winning author Nikos Kazantzakis talking about this where he says there is a flame here. Let's call it soul. Let's call it spirit. It's indescribable. It's ineffable. And yet it is such a wonderful feeling when you find that soul, that spirit in a place that it makes you grateful to be a human being. Mm -hmm.